Hi, and welcome to another episode of Ask Alan Anything, where we focus in on marketing and publishing for authors and their books. So we're going to start off the show. As always, if you have questions, you're welcome to email them to us ahead of time at bourgeoismedia at outlook.com. You'll see it on the screen from time to time throughout the show. So definitely feel free to ask any question about publishing a book or marketing a book. We're here to help you. We have been doing it for a long time. Um, just as a recap, I have been, I was a publisher, a small press for um, six years and was able to get 60 books done for people throughout the world. Um, Australia, Canada, um, Japan, the US, India. Um, so we're here to help. We, we have that experience. We've, we're going through the process and everything before certain things happen with the publishing world, which then forced us to move into a different arena, which was marketing. And I've been helping authors with marketing for the last almost, well, actually, as of this episode, nine years now. Um, so we've been working really hard developing that and starting off the ninth year of helping authors. So this is just one of many tools we use. Um, and we have lots of programs and opportunities, so feel free to check out our website at indiebeacon.com. If you live in Texas, you can check out our other sister organization, TX Authors at, uh, excuse me, txauthors.com. Um, both of those organizations are designed to help authors, and we have other organizations as well, which we'll talk about in a minute. So in this last week, a couple of reports have come out about book sales. And we know that slowly books, physical book sales have been decreasing. Yes, ebooks and audiobooks have increased to a certain degree, even though recently ebooks have seen a slight decrease. And that's been more because the audiobooks have been increasing. But the overall aspect of readership has decreased over the years and continues to decrease. So that's what we're going to be talking about for most of this show. What is it we as authors, we as readers can do to increase readership of books. Now, for us, for me specifically, I've created organizations. I have Dear Texas, which is Drop Everything Read Texas, and Drop Everything and Read Indie, Dear Indie, um, along with the Texas Authors Institute of History and a couple other programs related to all of that. I have created these organizations to encourage reading of all ages. Our main focus is getting books into Title I schools and to libraries that can't afford them. Title I schools are really important because most of those people are low income and they don't have the ability and the privilege to go out and buy books. So having books in their hands is very important. In a recent survey done, it was estimated that out of every 300 children in low income, only one have an age appropriate book to read. And that's really sad. I mean, that's the future of America. Um, not just those that have the money, but those that don't have the money. We've seen it time and time again that when those that come from a low-income family are given the tools and the opportunities, they can rise above that and continue to improve the American state, the country, the world um, through their learning, through the process, through their growth, and through their understanding of what is available to them. And reading is a key element. Um, you might have seen some of our um, tweets and postings that we've done over the last six months reminding people that musicians cannot write music without words, that artists cannot explain their art without words, um, the creative industry in, as a whole cannot exist without words. And so words being the fact that that's what authors deal with and work with is the most critical and important thing for all creative aspects. And no creative industry should ignore writers or should put them off to the side as not a creative aspect because they are. Writing is a creative aspect because it takes consideration of a lot of things, not just how to write the words, but what is meant by the words? What is the story you want to share? How do you want to share the story? All those things, just like you would do with music. What is the tempo? What is the speed? Just like with art, what are the colors? How are you approaching them? How are you using them? Just like with movies, how are you laying out the scenes and all that stuff? So just like those, wordsmiths, authors have to be just as creative. And it's just not something anybody can do. Now we're saying that, yes, there are computers that are creating poems, that are creating fictional stories. They are also creating 
music. They are also creating art. Um, and it wouldn't be long before I'm sure they create some kind of movie too. So while computers, AI, artificial intelligence is increasing and has the ability to take over that creative concept based on scientific research, the true human element, which is what creative aspects is all about, um, would be lost if AI was given the total control. So we don't want that, but we do, in order for us to succeed as authors, need to have readers. So the question to you as a reader is, or and, and specifically more as an author, what are you doing to help encourage more reading? Not just selling of your books. Everybody's selling their books. Everybody wants their books to be read. But what is it you are doing as an author to get in there and to encourage people to read? Are you educating them, um, many readers, that reading is a good way to relieve stress, a good way to educate yourself about what's going on in the world, a good way just to unwind and to allow all the pressures of the day just to pass away. It doesn't matter what you're reading, whether you're reading something educational as a historical fiction or even um, historical books, educational books, fiction books, all of that, poems, everything. All of that relates to improving one's point of view in life, to be able to also relax, which I'm stressing again here, because it does help you relieve stress. When you're allowed to take a book and just escape from the day-to-day -day world, it's healthy for you. It can be addictive, yes, but a healthy addiction, and it helps relieve that stress, that continuing pressure that we are all facing and all are, uh, are feeling at this time in, in our lives. And it doesn't matter what age you are, whether you're in school, um, elementary, middle school, high school, college, um, going back to school, uh, retired, working a full-time career, having kids. Even if you have kids, reading to kids helps you relax as a parent. So again, as an author, what are you doing to help improve and encourage more reading. I'd like for you to send me those ideas so that we can share them with other authors. And who knows, maybe we can create something for that nature. Um, you can send them to the email address you've been seeing on the screen, media at outlook.com. Also, um, just to go back to things that I've also created, um, we have the National Authors Day, which was created many, many years ago, but we have created a, a celebration of authors in Houston, Texas on November 2nd. So feel free to check that out and register to participate. Even if you're participating in your city and you can't come to Houston, there are t-shirts that you can wear to promote the fact that you're an author, to promote reading. So we hope you check that out. That website is um, authors.deartexas, oops, sorry, authors.deartexas.org. I'll have that on the screen so you can see that. Again, that's authors.indy excuse me, authors.dearandy.org. And also in reference to writing and reading, getting readers involved in the books, because there's a lot of readers that one would love to have their own character or have a great story idea, but they don't want to write because that's not their thing. Or always wonder, well, what would happen if um, something in the middle of the plot got a twist and, and changed things up? Um, or location, businesses. If you need to advertise the location very inexpensively, these are all great tools and ways of doing it. And we've created a program called We Fiction, which is designed for author teams, a team of two to four authors get together and will write a book based on all the information the readers provide. And we're asking readers to donate money so that they can, one, be included in, in the various stories or books or whatever, but also get the books free of charge to judge and then also help us raise money so that we can then get more books into Title I schools and libraries. So the website for that is wefiction.dearindy.org. Again, the authors, you can sign up for your teams and start getting publicity and recognition out there for who you are and what you're doing. And then also for the readers, you can add in your characters, your plot, your plot twists and your locations. Um, you can do whatever donation amount you want. Again, remember, every penny helps us raise money to get books into Title I schools and libraries across the country. So this is a program that's designed to help everybody in many different levels.
So those are two of the things, actually three, with the DEER program that I've done. Um, I've also created the Texas Authors Institute of History, which is a museum for Texas authors that is designed to help build the future writers of America. We have a contest, a short story contest for grades 6 through 12. Um, we are hoping to build a physical location by 2036 that will house a lot of these important books that have been written over the last 200 years. Um, there's an estimated 10,000 Texas authors. Uh, let me see what the estimate is in the country. And the latest count is 39, yeah, 39 million, yeah. Um, that's all right, 329 million, there we go. 329 million Americans. So that means there's close to a million authors, about 750 authors in the United States, 750,000 authors in the United States. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine if they all pulled together and worked together as a community and built upon that and educated people on the value of reading, what that could do to not only the United States economy, but also then to books in general, as far as the sales, the, the styles, the creative, creative aspect. But again, as I mentioned earlier, releasing the stress, releasing the anxiety that goes on in the world so much today. All of these things can happen if authors unite and work together. You have 750,000 authors working together across this country to develop something is amazing, but they need to get up off their ass and do it. Because to be honest, if you don't improve the quality and the amount of readership that is out there, your books are not going to sell and you're not going to succeed. That's just bottom line. So if you want to write, if you want to create stuff and have people read it, you need to get up off your ass and help build readers, starting from a young age all the way through senior citizens. Everybody should understand the value of reading, the creative aspect of it, the joy they'll get from it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's one of the few arts that is involved with all the other arts. And so it's a very vital part of America, of the world, you know, any free world really, that wants to succeed, they educate their people. And we need to get people to understand that more so and to read more. So as I mentioned earlier, the question out there right now is, what are you doing personally to help encourage more reading? Not just selling your books, but actually encouraging people of all ages to read more. Send me your information so we can add it into the database and let other authors know. As I mentioned, if authors gather together and share ideas, we can continue to grow as a writing community, have book sales that continue to increase, everybody wins all the way down the line. This is more of a trickle down aspect than a lot of other programs that have gone on over the years. <coughs> My apologies there. So, Think about that. What is it we can do as authors to encourage more reading? I'd love to hear from you. I look forward to hearing from you and sharing that information. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, reading and book sales specifically have decreased again. Now, one of the reports that have come out was by the educational textbooks industry, um, meaning those that are designed for educational purposes, whether it be in college, research papers, things of that nature, they're finding their book sales are also decreasing at a faster pace than general reading is. But reading in general, purchases of paperbacks continue to decrease. Ebooks have pretty much flattened out and audiobooks are picking up. Yes, that's great that people are listening to audiobooks. God knows we have a busy life and you know, that may be the only time to listen to something or, or to enjoy something other than traffic. Um, but reading is a mental program, a mental exercise that improves a lot of things. Um, just, have, just reading, just being able to go through that process, that mental exercise improves the syntax in the, the brain, improves brain memory, improves the usage of the brain. It keeps other diseases at bay longer. So that's another good reason why more people should be reading and stuff. Um, and all this has been proved over the years. So go out and search for the um, 
different pro, uh, research papers, you'll see that it's true. Um, I should put it up on a list somewhere and pull it all together for you, but you can also get up off your ass and do some research. You'll find some things. Um, hate to be sounding really tough and everything, but that is the reality for authors. Somebody's got to stop handling them and trying to take all their money and actually force them to do some work because that's the only way they're going to succeed. And the authors need to work to be able to succeed, plain and simple. It's not about just writing a book and then becoming a millionaire. Those days are gone. You need to work. You need to develop on a lot of different levels. Whether you know that's building a great writer, um, you know, getting all those skills together, marketing, doing work, you know, building the re readers and getting more people to read. Whatever it is, everybody's got to put in their fair share and, and do that. So definitely check it out and, and see what you can do. So um, no news has happened as far as publishing or anything or Barnes & Noble or anything of that nature. Um, we're all anxious to see what happens with that purchase of Barnes & Noble. Um, the new CEO should be taking over, I believe, in August. So it'll take some time to see the process, anywhere from six months to a year to see what they implement and excuse me, what continues to grow and develop, et cetera, and stuff. So we're all anxious to see that. In the meantime, um, Costco and some other places are um, decreasing the amount of books that they display simply because the book sales are decreasing. So why have, you know, sellable space for something that's not selling? So they're getting rid of the books and stuff, which means more limitations on where you can find good books. You know, a lot of the publishing houses aren't putting out many great books these years since Trump has dominated the sales force. Um, but those are some of the things that, you know, authors and readers need to be aware of and stuff. Um, we don't want um, a monopoly on where to buy books. Um, so support your independent bookstores. They are a great source. Um, if you're looking for new independent authors, you can go to indielector.store. There's lots of authors on there. And that's that website, um, that bookstore is continuously growing. Um, so you'll always see new books being added constantly and stuff. So definitely check them out. Um, that's pretty much it right now. Um, don't forget for an author, you want to make sure you're planning out um, far in advance your sales, um, your pre-orders, your arcs, your distribution, and you know, your marketing tools, basically. Um, we've done previous episodes about a six month program. So definitely check out that um, review some of those options that are available to you. Um, feel free to email me with questions about that, but don't rush your book to publish. If you rush your book, you're not going to have good success. You need to plan things out. You need to spread it out. You need to build up to it. This will also help you financially too, to spread things out. That will make it easier for you on the pocketbook and guarantee better success rate by doing the long-term program. Um, most self-published authors, indie authors, um, and some of the small presses too I'm seeing are rushing things to press because they want to grab the dollar and stuff. And you know, they need that income to come back and stuff. But in the long run, they hurt themselves because it gets out there and then it flops because nobody's following up, nobody's spending the time and energy because they moved on to the next project and stuff. So you need to take the time, you need to build on it, you need to build the career, you need to build the sales, plain and simple. Again, as I mentioned on previous episodes, we've talked about that, so definitely check them out. I am drawing a blank on what else. Um, I pretty much have addressed all the questions that were sent into us in reference to writing and book sales. Um, as I mentioned before, if you have any questions, feel free to email us at bourgeoismedia at outlook.com. You've seen the email address pop up on the screen from time to time. We are here to help you. Um, if it's about publishing and marketing of your books, any question is welcome. And we do love getting those emails and we do love hearing from you um, and sharing those ideas. We're testing out a new program in reference to Twitter that we'll hopefully be sharing with you. If you do get a chance, check out Authors Marketing event. Um, the website is 2019.authors.marketing. No .com or anything like that, just 2019.authors.marketing. There are a lot of great sessions on there. You can buy a video pass. 
So you can watch all the videos after it's done. If you can attend in San Antonio, that would be great. It's at the end of July, July 26th through the 28th. It's a great event. We, they've been doing it for four years and they've already scheduled the 2020 event. So it should be a good event as well for next year and stuff. But definitely check it all out. Um, those are great tools. If you buy a video pass, you get access to all the videos from the last four years, the last three years plus this year. Um, so a ton of information that can help you better market and sell yourselves. Again, the website is 2019.authors.marketing, um, or you can go to campus.authors.marketing for the video passes. Um, but either website will get you all that information and get you squared away. It's very inexpensive, and it's a great service to learn at your own pace. And the beauty is you'll be able to go back you know, and listen to the shows throughout the year. So it's not a short, limited one month. you got to listen to it all. You can buy the pass and listen to it all year long and stuff. So with that, I'm going to sign off, and I thank you very much for watching. Again, if you have any questions, we are here to help. Send them to bourgeoismedia at outlook.com. Thank you, and have a good day. Hi, this is your host, B. Alan Bourgeois. Thanks for watching Ask Alan Anything. We do appreciate you tuning in from time to time, and we are asking that if you're interested in the show and, and what if the value it has for authors, that you help support us. We have created a Patreon page. You can go to patron, P-A-T-E-R-O-N dot com and go to Bourgeois Media and become a sponsor. We have a lot of different options for you, free books, free credits, free whatever we can find that doesn't cost us too much, that allows us to be able to still raise money for Title I schools, getting the books into their hands and also keeping the show up and running. So please check us out. That is patron, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com and then look for Bourgeois Media. And I appreciate your support. Thanks. National Authors Day is November 2nd, 2019 in Houston, Texas. Join us at Discovery Green as we celebrate being a published author and remind the world of the great books that writers constantly create for your enjoyment. You can register at authors.dearindy.org. Authors, do you know the true cost of being published? In the Authors Revolution workbook, B. Ellen Bourgeois gives you hands-on tools to use and to understand the true cost of being published. He will also give you information about low-cost or free programs that are designed to help you market your book. B. Ellen Bourgeois has been helping hundreds of authors since 2011, educating them on how to better market and sell their books. Buy the Authors Revolution workbook exclusively at indielector.store 